if we're going to be here 10 minutes or 10 hours to talk about stuff that's not going to benefit you. And my dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that tonight's discussion is really an introduction to the topic of unity. Everybody's talking about unity, Muslim got to be united and stuff like that, but there are some prerequisites that we have to do, and that's not what I want to do. When I was in the third grade, I learned a song that I never forgot since the third grade. Would you like for me to sing it for you now? It's not going to happen. <laughs> but the song went something like this. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Someone once said that the most important knowledge that you can have is the knowledge of yourself. I do agree that the knowledge of self is important. But the most important knowledge you can ever have is the knowledge of Allah. That's the key to everything. The knowledge of Allah. And this is why the Prophet Ali wasalam, sent Mu'adh to Yemen. He says, let the first thing you do, invite them to the oneness of Allah. And notice the word that he used. Invitation. Da'wah is not an order. You don't order people to become Muslim. You invite them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how bil hikmah wa ma'adit al hasana. And invite to the way of that Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. So today, the emphasis that I'm going to try to do is a little bit about human nature. Human nature. When the Prophet, والسلام, when he went to Medina, he saw the people pollinating dates. He's manipulating the seeds. They were manipulating the seeds. And he said, what are you doing? He said, it gives us more fruit. And he said, maybe you shouldn't do it. So they stopped. As a result, the fruits, they failed. And they came to the Prophet والسلام, and he said, this statement, I wish every leader in America and every leader around the world would adopt this, what the Prophet said والسلام. He said, إِذَا أَمَتَكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ دِينُكُمْ بِهِ Whenever I order you to do something of your religion, do it. Your religion, you do it. You don't have to worry about the prophet. He talks about salat and siyam. And you don't have to worry. If I order you of your religion, do it. But if I order you to do something of my opinion, then I'm only a prophet, uh, only a human being. So, this human being, this is what we're going to talk about, because Allah mentioned Quran, لَقَدْ قَرَمْنَا بَنِي Adam, And we have honored the children of Adam. We are honorable people, human beings. You know who we are? We Johnny come lately. The human beings are Johnny come lately. Everybody was here before the human being. The universe was here. The angels were here. The jinn were here. The earth, the animals, the plants. All of that was here before man come, man come, Johnny come lately. But yet, Allah ordered the angels to bow down to the man, man he created, Adam. And here I want to say um, what the Quran does. Not only does the Quran give us new information that maybe we didn't have before, but it clarifies mistakes that people have made. For instance, do you know that in Christian theology, they called the big angel Lucifer. And they said Lucifer, an angel, he rebelled against God and took one third of the angels down with him. This is their theology. So the, so the Bible don't say exactly that one third angels, no. They don't use that word angels, but this is how they interpret it. And it is a theological blunder. 
This is why when you read the Quran, Allah says, Ma khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa I have not created jinn and humans except to worship me. He don't mention angels. Don't the angels worship Allah? Yes, but there's a difference. There's a major difference. What happens when Allah loves someone? When he loves someone, he calls Jibril. Alayhi salat wa salam and say, Allah loved that person, you love that person too. And then Jibril tell all the angels, Allah loved that person. And all the angels, they love that person. Angels cannot, they cannot disobey Allah. Impossible. Then we would have an issue if angels disobeyed Allah. There's a, there's a problem. When do we know when the angels disobey Allah or not? No, angels never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who are, who are we? Alam tarao anna Allah sakhra lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi Allah. Don't you see Allah has subjected for you, human beings, everything in the heavens and earth. Everything in the heavens, Allah made for us, made for human beings. And he's given us a great honor. And I'm going to show you because my sub-theme is like unity. But we have to go like a long way to get to unity. So I just want to give what I think some of the um, key factors. Human beings. bashar. You ever heard of the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court is the largest court in America. And the judges beneath the Supreme Court, the judgment, the, the, uh, when, the, when the judge make a judgment, they call it uh, judgment in the smaller courts. But the Supreme Court, they don't call it judgment. You know what they call it? They call it opinion. They call it opinions. And you have nine chief justices. And they, everybody count. If you have five ruled for something, for against, they write the opinion of the majority and they write the opinion of the minority. And they respect all of them. They call it opinions. Tonight, in speaking to you, I'm going to make some opinions, and then I'm going to give you something um, direct. By the way, my opinion. I have a theory, Imam, Imam Oliver, I have a, I have a theory about, about shaitan. This is my theory. You don't have to, it's like Imam Sarajis, you don't have to agree. I believe that Iblis had the ability to be the greatest jinn ever. Because Allah didn't ask anyone else to bow down to Adam except the angels and Iblis. It would be unjust for Allah to give Iblis an order that he couldn't fulfill. It would be unjust. No, he could have obeyed Allah. Only to worship me. And he disobeyed Allah. And he did not know who Allah was. Kola Rabbi, my Lord, give me respite until they are raised up. He knows. He knows the deen better than us. That's why he can deceive us because he knows. He do not know. He knows exactly what he's doing. And Iblis's um motivation is different from anyone else. So when you say somebody like Trump is a devil, he's not a devil. See, Trump does things, he wants something. He wants money. He wants power. But Shaitan's number one objective, you ever hear the term misery loves company? He knows he's going to the hellfire. You do not know. When you get a chance, look at Muslim Hadith, volume number one, Kitab iman Book of Faith. And here, uh, Shaitan is saying that 
when the uh, when he sees us read the Quran and make prostration, he runs in seclusion crying and say, woe is with me. The children of Adam was given instruction to prostrate and they did for whom Jannah. For them is Jannah. I was given the instruction and I refused Wali and Nar for me to help. So the only thing he wants to do is read right in the Quran. He desired that you become with him companions in the fire. That's it. Misery love company. He won't be alone. And he's taking a whole lot of folk with him. Now, human nature. Consider this verse from the Quran. Quran. And when you read in the Quran, if you read the Quran in, in English, fine. But I would argue that if you read it in the original tongue, for sure you, you, you get more. I, I give an example. In, in English, when you say you, right, while you, you can be talking about one man, two men, a hundred men, a woman, two. But Arabic is very precise. They have what you call um, mufarat, singular, mathanin, du, jam'un, plural. So, law uh, sha'a uh, rabbuka. So you've got to ask yourself the question, who Allah is speaking to? See, when you read the Arabic, it's clear. Rabbuka. Ya Muhammad. Allah is speaking to the Prophet, So when you read the English, when your Lord said, uh, when your Lord said, who is he speaking to? It's not clear. It's, it's ambiguous. But the Arabic is very precise. I'm going to give you a couple more examples before we leave, inshallah. So, uh, um, the word lao means if. Something didn't happen, but if. If your Lord had willed, he would have made all the people the same, same religion, all Jews, all Christians, all Muslims. And they will not cease to differ. You ever wonder why we differ so much? Jews broken up into sects. Christians broken up into sects. Muslims broken up to sex. Why? Because Allah has honored us to such a degree, he's not going to make you. He's not going to make you. He gonna, he's going to himself. He's the Lord of the world. He can make you believe. No one can believe except by the permission of Allah. He's not going to. If he wanted to, he made everybody believe. But it's not like that. And this is the key to talking to people is to understand that, that you got to convince people. Now, look into this verse of Quran. If I would ask you, of all the figures in history, human beings, who was the most tyrannical in the Quran? Who would you say? Huh? Fir'aun. Fir'aun. I say the same thing for around. So listen to what Allah said. Idhaba ila fir'aun. Idhaba. You see, the Arabic is real precise. You know Allah is speaking to two people. Idhab, wahid. Idhaba. Idhaba. Idhabu, plural. Idhaba. You too, Ithaba ila Fir'aun, you too go to Fir'aun. What to? Musa and Harun. Musa and Harun, two prophets. Ithaba ila Fir'aun, innahu tugha. He's gone way beyond. Makula lahu kaulin layina la'aluhu yatazakaru au yaksha. Say gentle words to him. Perhaps he would receive admonition in fear Allah. As evil as Fir'aun was, gentle words, the key to da'wah. Now, 
we're going to have an exercise here. Can I do an exercise with you? Uh, one of the great uh, scholars of Islam, ninth century scholar, a man by the name of Hamdun, he said something that became so widely quoted by Muslims that people thought it was hadith. It's not hadith. What I'm going to tell you now, it's not hadith. It's from this Muslim scholar. He said, make 70 excuses for your brother. Make 70 excuses. We don't make excuses. We charge people. So I'm going to give you an ex We're going to do exercise now. And uh, if you're going to participate, you have to participate, brothers or sisters. There's a Muslim with kufi on, got a beard, a kameez. You see him going to a liquor store. I want 10 people, raise your hand, make an excuse why he going into that liquor store. Because usually, we read it, stalk for law. Am I right? But let's make an excuse. Who's the first one? Give me, yes. Had to use the bathroom. Why you think he going to get drunk? He had to use the bathroom. One, two, yes. car broke down. He needs to use the phone. He ain't doing it to get drunk. Yes. Hmm? He came to give dawah. He went to the, he went to the liquor store to give dawah in, in your little mind, your little petty little mind. Yes. Looking for directions. Yes. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, that's a lot. I like that one. He buys some alcohol and then pours it out. Allahu Akbar. I love that one. That's four. Five, yes. Very good. The employee had more than one worker, and he had to meet some five, six. He didn't know it was a liquor store. He didn't know it was a liquor store. Number six, seven, yes, ma'am. Change? Yes, yeah, somebody said that. Oh so, oh, so he went more change. He went back a second time. He went more, I got, yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hmm? Hmm? Someone, oh, he needed a place to pray. Let me go to the liquor store. <laughs> Fernandia, Hajj? Huh? He went there to burn it down. Only Hajj would say that. Yes. Hmm? To pray. Oh, it's, ra it's raining. Let me go to the liquor store. There's a grocery store right here. I won't go to the liquor store. <laughs> Very good. One more. Yes. Say it again. Looking for someone, he said? Oh, okay, good. So you see, if I really wanted to do this exercise, I would do 40. My point is, we're too quick to condemn. Let me give you an example, because you know, we don't know Allah, and we don't know ourselves. Let me give you an example, what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And remember, what he say about Allah, about the deen, take it. It's not an opinion, it's the gospel. So, um, I was just about to make a point Iman, what was I about to say? You have no idea, do you? All right. So the point I want to say, oh, about, about us knowing a lot, I know what it is now. 
Listen to what the Prophet says, sallallahu may be surprising to some of you. Man satara musliman satarullah fi dunya wal akhirah. Whoever covers the fault of a Muslim, Allah will cover their fault in this life and in the hereafter. You know, when we were children, and you know, you always had a child say, ooh, I'm going to tell mommy, ooh, I'm going to tell mommy. They call it tattletale. That's not Islam. We, we think that's, Imam, you don't know what that brother, you don't know what he do. I know what he do. I'm going to tell you. Look at this picture. Yom al -Akhira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a person, a Muslim, and we got to remember Yom al -Akhir is judgment in front of the whole universe. Everybody's watching, ain't closed doors. In this case, Allah will take a Muslim and before he judges them, he will cover him. So no one can hear but him. And Allah would ask him this question. Do you remember on such and such day you did that? Yes. Do you remember on such and such day you did that? Yes. Do you remember? And that person would think that they're going to hellfire. Because Allah, he don't miss nothing. And then Allah will say, I covered it for you in the dunya. I forgive you today. You, you see, that's how Allah is. You ain't trying to run every little thing that people do. You want to get and say, look, look at the door, look at the door. So I'm almost getting to the conclusion of my introduction. What's the matter? You thought I started? I didn't start yet. This is the introduction. Now I'm gonna start. Um, in my opinion, you may have done it already. Imam Oliver, Muhammad, if I were you, I would bring him here pack up this masjid and talk about one of the greatest da'wah move, movements ever in the history of Islam in America. That's what I would do. What do you mean by that? You know, you need love and compassion. One of the things that we, we lack, we, we lack love and compassion and we're quick to make judgments. Instead of putting the, the best construction, we are quick to make judgments. I'll give an example. If I say to you, Kefa halukum, what does that mean? How are you? That's true, but not exactly. In Arabic, the word hal means condition, circumstance. You're not saying how you're doing. What's your condition like? You have to study, my opinion, the condition of black people in this country. I think most people have no idea. And if you understood the condition of black people, their circumstances, then maybe you would understand the history of the nation of Islam. Some of you want to tear them apart. Okay, fine. Fine, you can do that. Rather than tear them apart, try to invite them. 1975, I was in a nation of Islam for six years, 1969 to 1975. And I was a full-time Sell a Muhammad Speaks newspaper. I sell a thousand Muhammad Speaks newspaper a day. Knock on doors in the projects. In those days, in the nation of Islam, they didn't call it da'wah, they called it fishing. And fishing mean, go get the people. People knew me, I was Jeffrey 12X. There was Jeffrey 13X over there. For real, 
Like right there. So the people, they knew me, and I would go to the house. They would invite me to their, to their weddings, their funerals, their graduations. A good rapport because I was a nation of Islam. And the one thing that the brothers and sisters from the nation of Islam had that most of us don't have is what, what the youth said, call it cred, credibility. Say what you want to say about the theology of the nation of Islam, but love of their people. And the people came to get them. And you know the story of Malcolm and others who came into the fold of Islam after having been in prison, after having been on drugs, and so forth, and so forth, and so on. But if any youth would study the theology of the nation of Islam, they would say, they're not Muslims. Any. It, it, it wasn't like simple, wasn't, uh, you know, rocket science. For instance, as a Muslim, the Prophet said, tell them, teach them the oneness of Allah. You can't say that this person is a man and is God. You can't do that. This is it's not Islam. In the nation of Islam, for six years, I never made one salat. Not one. I prayed. But the Prophet said, Pray as you see me pray. So if you don't go like this and make sajda and ruku, you're not praying. You, you, okay, you prayed five times a day. Good. In the six years of the nation of Islam, I never fasted one day of Ramadan. Actually, Imam Malibu, he correct, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. But we fasted in December. No, you can't fast in December. Ak. Ak. You got praying Ramadan. And so, but one thing I will tell you this about Mr. Elijah Muhammad. Even from Sunni scholars, I've heard them say, one, one Imam, Imam Tawfiq, um, the Imam of Masjid of Islamic brother in Harlem who died years ago. He said, no one knew the psychology of the African Americans more than Elijah Muhammad. I would not have done it the way he did it. But in his book, he said this, but you were not given my job. So all those people, Imam, you, may, you know better than me, Imam, um, the University of Islam, how many do they have established around the country? At least 100 or more. Businesses, all of that. In 1975, something happened. This is why Allah is great. And I believe, my opinion, that Allah favored the nation of Islam by sending guidance. I was there. You remember, were you there? Chicago, you were there. 1975. Mr. Elijah Muhammad had just died. Had he died a week later, a week before, would have been a major difference. He died in the exact time we're coming for our national holiday, Savior's Day. I was there in the front roster, me, man. I remember sitting right behind me, all the speakers. And one by one by one by one, each one of them giving their support to a man at that time, Minister Wall, uh, Wall, Wallace Muhammad at that time. And the last one to speak, Minister Farrakhan, I was there. He was my minister in New York City. I'm sitting there waiting for him. I said, okay, all that sounds good, but I want to see what my minister is going to say. Minister Farrakhan said that uh, Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the will of Allah. Minister Wallace Muhammad is the will of Allah. That Imam, Martha D. Muhammad, may Allah give him the highest place of Jannah, transformed that entire nation of Islam to Sunni Muslim. Uh, a friend of mine in, um, in Orlando told me he went to a place called uh, Guinea Basu, which is uh, West Africa north. Uh, uh, not Guinea. Guinea is colonized by the French. They speak French. 
But Guinea Basu colonized by the Portuguese. He said he went there uh, with his sheikh, and they gave 7,000 shahadas at one time because the chief of the tribe took shahada and everybody took shahada. If you are excited about that, how could you not be excited about the nation of Islam? Massive transformation. Imam, since 1975, I have made over 83,000 prayers. 83,000. I haven't missed a prayer. 83,000 prayers. And you know what? Every prayer I make, Imam Walthu D. Muhammad gets some credit for it. Yeah. Because he's the one that guided us. Mandela Allah Khairin, whoever shows good, leads to good, will have the reward like the one who did, who did it. Allah blessed me to make pilgrimage six times. I didn't make pilgrims before 75. Allah blessed me to fast for 46 years. Never missed a day. Imam Walter D. Muhammad gets credit also. And guiding us that first year, Imam, he guided us into, he did something that's remarkable. I, I, Imam, you got to write about it. Somebody got to, you going to write about it? I think that's a major story. Now what happens is that we're impatient. Imam, if I can ask Imam Muhammad a question, I always wanted to ask him this question. I thought about it later years, after he passed. Imam, why did you come back? You a Muslim already, you good? You know the um, pillars of Islam, you practice? Why you come back? He must have had a profound love for us. What he did was dangerous. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. But for him to go against his father like that and people fanatical in their belief, they would kill him. And some people wanted to do it. Allah blessed them. And the other thing Allah blessed them, Bil Hikmah, the wisdom that he used. So in that first year, I, Imam, I remember the first Juma Khutbah I gave, right? My masjid, right? Muhammad's Mosque number 7C. I, I, I was given the Khutbah, and the people in the congregation, my congregation was laughing at me. Oh, <laughs> I said, it's okay. You're laughing today. One day you won't be laughing. So I, I'm saying that to make a, re, uh, a, a point. I'm going to start coming to my conclusion. We have to do better in calling the people to Islam. I don't care what they say they believe in. With love and compassion, Allah sent the prophets. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, uh, one day uh, he raised his hand and said, Allahumma ummati, ummati wa bakah. Oh Allah, ma umma, ma umma. And he started crying. Allah said to Jibril, Ya Jibril, if habila Muhammad fa as'alu ma yukika. Go to Muhammad and find out why he's crying. You know why he's crying? For his ummah. Crying for his ummah. Let me give you one, one quick. Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to finish. I think we should be finished by Fajr. <laughs> what? I say what? I say something. What? But Fajr, inshallah. <laughs> listen, listen to this, right? Listen to this. Let me show you how much he loved us. The Prophet Muhammad, how much he loved us. And when the resurrection happens, I want you to picture this. The people, they now know what's going on. And they will go to Adam. Ya Adam, anta Abu Bashar. You are the father of mankind. Allah created you with his own hands and breathed into you the ruh and ordered the angels to bow down to you. 
and place you in Jannah. Can you help us? Kala, let's do laha. I'm not fit for it. Idhabu ila ghayri. Idhabu ila nuh. And he will go to, the people will go to Noah. Let's do laha. Idhabu ila ghayri. Idhabu ila Ibrahim. Go to Ibrahim. As I mentioned in the khutbah uh, today about Ibrahim, uh, you know, Khairu Bariya. Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam will say, Let's do laha. I'm not fit for it. Idhabu ila ghayri. Idhabu ila Musa. Musa will say the same thing. Let's do laha. I'm not fit for it. Idhabu ila Isa. People go to Jesus. Let's do laha. I'm not fit for it. Idhabu ila Muhammad. Ana biha. Ana biha. I'm the one. Because his love for the people to such a degree that every prophet has a dua that's answered, he kept his until Yom al Qiyamah so that I can use it to get the people out. So I close with this. You know, the more you study, the more you learn. The, the, the wider your, your knowledge and your, your thinking becomes. Allah blessed me in 1978 to study in uh, Umu Korea University, at that time, King Abdul Aziz University. My favorite teacher, Sheikh Hussein Hamid Hassan from Egypt, just passed, I think, last year. My favorite teacher, we call them Big Thick. One of the smartest people I've ever met. Whenever we ask him a question, his typical answer is, we have three opinions. We have three opinions. The question you're asking, we have three opinions. Imam Shafi'i, his opinion is such and such, and this is the evidence that he used. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal had a different opinion. This is his opinion, and this is the evidence he used. Imam Malik had a third opinion, and this is the evidence that he used. I think that the most appropriate uh, opinion is such and such. That's, that's, that's the way he did it. Things ain't always black and white. That which is halal is plain. That which is haram is plain. In between the doubtful matters, not many people know about them. So in my conclusion, um, brothers and sisters, is that take it easy. Take it easy. Continue to study the deen, but invite everybody to Islam. Don't erase anybody. Imam, my opinion should, is that, okay, you got the knowledge now. You should build on what we had. You can't have less schools than we had back then. You got this knowledge now. And this is a warning. The prophet, he gives us a warning. He says, one of you, you do the work of the people of Jannah. Until you're this close to death. And then you begin to do the deeds of the people of hellfire. For Understand what I just said. I want you to, I want you to get this. Right? Because sometimes we can feel good about ourselves. And you be careful. You be careful. Because that person can be so far away, and you look at them far away. Oh man, they ain't gonna be no Muslim. We, you know, I'm telling you, we, we drug addicts, prostitutes, we went to them. Alhamdulillah. Many of them converted to Islam. 35,000 to 40,000 inmates in prison take shahada every year. Some of the worst criminals. Read the autobiography of Malcolm X. He will tell you. So, alhamdulillah, on the one hand, and on the other hand, some people do the work of the people of hellfire until the distance that far from death. And then... They take shahada. And they begin to do the work of the people of Jannah. And then they enter Jannah. 
Don't get so uppity on yourself that you're such a pious and a righteous Muslim. You're so good and they're so bad that you won't even talk to them and invite them to Islam. Part of our job is to invite to Islam. I don't care who they are. If Allah told Musa and Harun to say gentle words, who are you? Who are you? You want to unite the Ummah? Start loving one another. Do you love each other? I mean, really, this, like, as we use the word. Uh, the Prophet said, that Allah said, where are those who love one another for my glory? To love each other just for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love one another. So may Allah bless you. Um, how many of you have parents that are not Muslim? Raise your hand. Look at these hands. So I'm making dua for every one of you, us, that our parents are not Muslim. Somehow, try to get them, you know, beautiful preaching and all of that. Brothers and sisters in the religion, people in the family, in your religion, your neighbors, all of that. So we have to now love the people the way the Prophet ﷺ loved the people. You want to have unity? Respect people and their opinions. You don't have to agree with them. But have a meaningful dialogue. So this again is my humble um, words. So feel free now, we're going to have questions and answers for a few moments. What time did Aisha come in? 11.30.